Hey, did you know that there's a secret American city tucked away in South Central Italy? I'm not making it up. It's a real thing. And if you come take a quick walk with me, I'll be happy to show it to you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> All right, welcome to Pescara, Italy. With 120,000 inhabitants and approximately another 300,000 in the surrounding province, Pescara is the largest city in Italy's Abruzzo region. Pescara is a special and unique city, mixing the charm of romantic 19th century palazzos with modern architecture. This town has enough hustle and bustle to make you feel like you're in a much larger city. As a matter of fact, Pescara punches well above its weight in a number of categories, including fine dining, nightlife, and art and culture. It is beyond a doubt Abruzzo's most cosmopolitan city, and among locals it's considered super chic to have a pied-a-terre in Pescara's historic city center. Pescara stands apart from other cities in the Abruzzo region for its scale and infrastructure. Uh, there are things in this city that you just won't see anywhere else in Abruzzo. That's why writer Guido Piovene, in his 1956 book entitled Viaggio in Italia, called Pescara an American city in Italy. This place has a lot of things that, to rural Italians, are more often associated with American cities. Pescara has mid-rise buildings, it's laid out in a grid format, even though the Romans invented that. It has elevated highways, suspension bridges, LCD advertising displays, and heavy industrial zones. There's even a concentration of American-themed businesses in the city. At an aesthetic level, it is, of course, an Italian city, but at times you could be forgiven for thinking that you're in Miami Beach. Pescara is Abruzzo's first city, but not its political capital. Uh, the center of regional government in Abruzzo is the city of L'Aquila. However, in 2009, L'Aquila was hit with a devastating earthquake that all but leveled the city and claimed the lives of 309 people. Since then, much of the political apparatus for Abruzzo's regional government has been moved here to Pescara. Despite its modern appearance, Pescara has ancient roots. In Roman times, it was known as Aternum, and the city was served as a commercial hub for Rome's trade throughout the Adriatic Sea. That, by the way, is an economic reality that holds true to this day. It's also notably the birthplace of Gabriele D'Annunzio, an important turn-of-the-century poet, writer, and political figure. The Pescaresi pride themselves on D'Annunzio, and signs of their connection to him can be found all over the city. Pescara is also an important transit hub. Its central train station, Pescara Centrale, connects the city to outlying towns and cities in the region, and it's connected to places like Bari, Bologna, and Milan by high-speed rail. It boasts an international airport with daily flights to the UK, and its ports provide sea access to the Balkans as well as many of Italy's island holdings in the Adriatic. If you're coming from Rome, it is possible to take a four-hour commuter rail line from Rome's Tibertina train station to Pescara Centrale. It's a beautiful, if slow, ride through picturesque mountain villages. Uh, the fastest way to arrive in Pescara from Rome is to drive or take a bus. Buses from Rome to Pescara depart from the Tibertina bus terminal across the street from the Tibertina train station. Uh, the ride is about two and a half hours by car, or three hours by bus. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to sit back and let you get a feel for the city as we walk around it. I'll still chime in here and there as we pass by businesses I like and other places of interest. This is also a great time to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, uh, drop a comment below and let me know what you think about Pescara. If you'd like to support this channel, then the absolute best thing you can do is share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back in a bit.
All right, so I'm gonna hop in right away. Coming into review right now is a place called White Bakery. Uh, White Bakery is a American style bakery here in Pescara. They serve muffins, donuts. Uh, they have one donut that looks just like uh, it came out of The Simpsons. Uh, you can also get an American breakfast here, uh, things like bacon and eggs, eggs benedict, and uh, other kind of traditional breakfast or brunch dishes. All right, so here we're about to pass by Pescara's Apple Store. Uh, it's not a real Apple Store. It's like a knockoff Apple Store. You can only find uh, actual Apple Stores in Italy's biggest cities like uh, Rome, Milan, Naples. But uh, Pescara does have uh, this store where you can get official Apple products. All right, so here we're entering into the Mercato Piazza of uh, Via Battisti. And uh, this kind of little square here, it doesn't exactly have a name, but I think everybody locally kind of just calls it Mercato because there's a big market here that we'll go into in a little bit. The reason I'm pointing out this square is because this is a uh, hub of nightlife activity in Pescara. All these bars, all these uh, stores that we're looking at here, those are bars that open up at night and they put tables out in the street where you can sit, have drinks with your friends, see and be seen. This is really kind of one of the coolest spots in Pescara at night, even though during the daytime it might not look like it. All right, and now we're entering into this indoor market. Uh, this market has um, like fruit vendors and little restaurants and stuff. It's a cool little spot, especially if it's like a rainy day. It's a nice place to hang out. Uh, at the moment, like the time that I came in here during my walk was sort of an off hour. I try to do these videos early in the morning so there are as few people in the shot as possible. Um, but uh, if you come here on most days, you'll find it pretty bustling.
All right, so I definitely, definitely want to point out this place that's coming up into view on the corner here. This is called Sushi Kaiten Pescara. Uh, this is a sushi place. It's a really cool place to get lunch or dinner. And uh, it's one of my favorite places to eat in Pescara. Now, if you have never eaten Asian cuisine, either Chinese or Japanese food in Italy, you absolutely have to try it. So uh, many people are aware of Italian food and how good it is because of the freshness of the ingredients. Um, imagine all of this locally produced uh, Italian uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, wheat and high quality flour being used in Asian cuisine. Uh, it is absolutely out of this world. The other thing that happens with Asian cuisine in Italy is very much like um, a standard fair Chinese food restaurant in, uh, say, New York will cater a bit in their recipes to the tastes of the local New Yorkers. The same thing happens in Italy. So what you wind up with is what I might call like a fusion light um, with Japanese or Chinese food in Italy. And it's out of this world. If you've never tried it, the next time you're in Italy, just go uh, try sushi or try Chinese food. It will blow your mind. Okay, and this is Piazza della Rinascita. This is one of the main piazzas in Pescara. It might be the main uh, piazza in Pescara. And... Um, you know, it's full of bars. Uh, there's um, a couple of stores that are right on the piazza. There's an ATM machine here. There used to be this awesome elephant statue. I actually wasn't looking when I was filming this. I'm not sure if it's still there. But it was a cool uh, sort of modern art type of statue that uh, kids could climb on and play on. Uh, anyway, so that's uh, Piazza della Rinascita. All right, and uh, here we're coming up on Barbasso. This is um, a cool little cafe that is close to the water. It's one of my favorite places to stop and sit down and get a cup of coffee. If you have not been to Pescara in a while, you may remember this bar being over here where we're looking now. Um, yeah, they, they moved across the street. So if you haven't been here for a while, it's not uh, where it used to be. It's now across the street. And if you know Pescar a little bit and you've been watching this video up until now, uh, by now you're probably screaming at your, uh, at your screen going, why the heck hasn't he shown the ocean? Uh, so Pescara is built right on the sea and it has this uh, wonderful uh, lungomare. So uh, lungomare uh, in, uh, in Italian, this is any uh, road usually with a pedestrian pathway that runs along the sea. And uh, I believe, uh, let's see what they call it here. In Pescara, it's Lungomare G. Matteotti, but uh, locals will just call it the Lungomare. Here in Pescara, you can just go uh, right across this Lungomare and step right onto the beach and go have a good time at the beach. Right here, what we're looking at is uh, a modern art statue. It's supposed to represent a ship. Not my favorite uh, statue, but uh, the, the Pescaresi uh, really seem to like it. And you'll also see that there's a bicycle path that runs along this Lungomare. That bicycle path is uh, connected with the Pista Ciclabile, the bicycle path that runs uh, a long way up and down the Abruzzo coast, like 30 miles. So if you have a bike, you can get pretty far. And uh, you'll see in Pescara, 
the, the really the best way to get around is by bicycle and uh, people use this bicycle path along the Lungomare, uh, sort of like a highway uh, to get from the more outlying neighborhoods into the central district. And here I'm just, we're walking past some uh, Stabilimenti Balneari. Uh, so uh, Stabilimento Balneari, it's, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to translate that, but it's like, um, uh, a beach establishment and uh, some of these are restaurants some of them are bars and they're built up along the waterline they're usually between the walkway on the lungomare and the beach and you'll find these in many italian cities what these are they're really cool because during the daytime they act as restaurants or cafes and also uh, they have um, lounge chairs and umbrellas that they set up on the beach and if you want you pay them like a day rate a day rate and you can go lounge out on a lounge chair and a waiter will come around and you can get cocktail service while you're on the beach and then at night many of these change into something that's more like a nightclub uh, so they play music they have DJs they serve alcoholic beverages and um, people can, you know, you could kind of do like a bar hopping thing and just hop uh, from one stabilimento to the other uh, all the way up and down the Lungomare. And here in Pescara, you'll actually see, I'm going to, um, you'll see in the video, I've actually cut out a little bit to speed ahead because Pescara has a Lungomare that is really very, very long. Uh, it's probably like a mile and a half long and it's just filled with these places. Um, and in this respect, uh, Pescara, it is sort of a party town, especially in the summertime when the Stablimenti Balneari are, are most active. All right, and here we're coming up to the Ponte del Mare. Uh, this is a pedestrian bridge that connects Pescara's uh, central district to Porta Nuova and uh, some of the more outlying parts of the city. Uh, you'll also see that um, this is where we start seeing more sort of the industrial infrastructure of the city. This bridge goes over a river and that river is built up. Uh, you'll see all these boats a lot of these are fishing boats, uh, some of them are pleasure craft, and uh, still others are, are commercial ships. They're doing other kinds of uh, uh, commercial marine work. You can also hear this plane going by in the background. There's actually a, a lot of air traffic coming in and out of Pescara, and if you're here for any length of time, um, you're sure to <laughs> you're sure to get annoyed by the aircraft at some point because at uh, especially like when you get into the late afternoon this is when all the the airplanes start coming in over the beach uh the people coming in from uh from england to to have fun at the beach here you can also see the bridge splits off so one side is pedestrians only and one side is bicycles only Also, since uh, once you get over this bridge, you're kind of getting out of the central district of Pescara. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to cut off the video here, and then you'll see that uh, I'll return to the central district because there's a couple of streets that I really, really wanted to show in this video uh, that I didn't walk past on the first pass.
All right, and uh, here I stopped to get a shot of this uh, this clothing store called Scout. I'm pretty sure that it's an Italian brand. Um, the only other Scout location that I know about offhand is Bologna, uh, is in the city of Bologna. But um, I really just wanted to get a uh, shot of this window display and the building. It, it's really cool. It reminds me of... I don't know, uh, maybe like the Paris World's Fair or um, turn of the century, like uh, circus lights um, in, in the United States. Anyway, it's just really cool. I like it.
Something that I haven't really talked about in this video is street art, but uh, if you're into um, murals or uh, street art or even modern art, Pescara is a great city for that. It's probably uh, the best city in Abruzzo for that. Um, there are a couple piece. There are a couple of pieces of street art that we walked past uh, during this video. But um, if you're into it and you're in Pescara, just keep your eye open because it is actually all over the place. And uh, now we're going to pass back through um, Piazza della Rinascita and continue on to Corso Umberto. And we've, we've actually, we've been on Corso Umberto for short stretches uh, once or twice already in this video. But I wanted to walk pretty much the whole thing from uh, where we are now, which is closer to the sea, to Pescara Centrale. And if Pescara can be said to have like a main street, uh, that's definitely this Corso Umberto. This is where all of the clothing stores are. Uh, if you're looking for major brands of clothing like uh, Benetton, um, uh, there's others they just don't come to mind at the moment. This is where you'll find them. And uh, if you're coming from Pescara Centrale and you just want to go straight to the beach, when you come out of uh, the main entrance and exit of Pescara Centrale, you'll sort of be funneled into this Corso Umberto. And then uh, here I wanted to uh, pass for a second underneath the porticos of the Genaravi building. Uh, this is just one of the larger, more gracious buildings in the city. And uh, uh, I like this little section under the porticos with the tile. <laughs> I did, though, turn the camera when I was walking past that lady. I wanted to... Um, uh, avoid the appearance that I was walking around sticking the camera in people's faces. And as you can see, um, Corso Umberto, for the most part, it's closed off to traffic. I think some commercial traffic is let through, and you'll also see official vehicles like police cars uh, patrol up and down it. And then on either side of it are these uh, wide sidewalks. And this is really like if your whole point of going to Piscar, if it's like Friday or Saturday night, and you're there to see and be seen by uh, people in your circle, maybe, I don't know, if you're in uh, high school or college or whatever, and there are a lot of people that you know who, um, who, who you want to, um, I don't know, uh, interact with. The, this is sort of the place where that's going to happen. This is also if there are ever, if you ever see uh, like street performers in Pescara and there are street performers, you'll see them up and down Corso Umberto. And then also in uh, Piazza della Rinascita, sometimes they'll set up like a performance stage. So if they have uh, a concert or um, some kind of festival or something like that. They'll always set up the, the, the stage uh, right there in Piazza della Rinascita, which is accessed uh, from either direction by this Corso Umberto. Okay, and if you've noticed in the distance here, there's that giant glass building. That's Pescara Centrale. And so when you come to the end of the street, you'll be at Pescara Centrale. 
And with that, uh, we've come to the end of our little walk here. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Alla prossima.